Hello everyone, welcome back to my stream. Let's see. Oh, I love this music, oh yes. Hey, Thomas Crusher has something to say. Politicians are hard to influence when not approached with wads of suspicious disorders source to exchange provisions, but even the most sclerotic of them listen to reason when you lay it out in simple terms. Their cozy government jobs won't exist if there isn't a government to suckle on. I end on synthesis, but I think that's eloquent enough for our representatives. The Deadlink program was established based on a presidential executive order. However, we still need to be officially ratified by Congress and make sure things go will go smoothly in that regard. Opponents Rikishi Yakuza Bouncer A popular pastime among Torah members is organizing illegal wrestling matches. The Yakuza that partake in these street fights follow the traditional sumo rules and aesthetics, enhanced with custom-made heavy-duty cybernetics provided by Torah Heavy Industries, of course. When not taking any time training in show fighting, they prove very useful bouncers and enforcers for the Yakuza, which anyone interloping in their business to sure, is sure to learn the hard way. Flamboyant and full of themselves, real showman. We need three more tokens to see which upgrades are hidden here. This shit doesn't work. Right. Let's proceed. Oh, I just forgot something. Yo, good friend. Welcome to my stream. I forgot to do one thing. I'll be right back, okay? I'm back. Right, let's see how effective we are tonight. Oh shit. Off with your head. Rocket launcher damage plus twenty percent. Looks good, actually. Oh. 30% at the start. I'll take it. Thank you very much.
Yeah, we missed a bit. Token. Tokens, tokens, tokens. guy more electric damage more rocket launcher damage I like that though I need something electric remove ignite effect of burning enemies and deal 300 damage to all enemies around them I'll take this one Critical hit damage increased by 50% for 5 seconds. It has little use, but damage to marked enemies is great. Robot? More tokens, more. I didn't, ha I didn't have enough money for the shop, anyways. So, we should have overpowered rocket launcher, by the way. Plus forty percent by now. Come on, concentrate. More rocket launcher damage and more electric damage. Less health points. <sighs> Let's take it then. Let's take these needler, needler nanites.
That was nice. More credits. rocket launcher damage possibly we should take more weapon damage weakness enemies we can enemies deal 25% less damage I don't know how that works actually. We got bonus to shock, so we'll take this. Yeah, electric damage. Almost 60% more. Beautiful. Let's take a weapon mod. I hope it will be shock damage. It's not. All right, change damage type to toxic. All right. It's only electric damage we have bonus for. Okay, what do we have? Toxic grenade. As much as I'd like to open this, this is great too, actually.
any chance to get into my Dephora. He'll probably stand. Son of a gun. Look at our, at our health point status. It's a more low. Right, let's see how we manage that. Open up. Launcher damage and headshot damage. Let's take it. I like this one over there. Tokens. We need tokens for upgrades anyway. Ah, this laser sounds.
Alright, what have we here? Here, less HP. We might die because of that. Let's check this one. Sea balls shock one nearby enemy. Let's re-roll it. You brew? Welcome to my chill. Become immune to damage for two seconds. Too bad we can't activate it by weapon change. <laughs> Alright, we'll take in this. That might do the trick if we'll ever manage to heal ourselves, that is. Really? Challenge mode? No. Weapon mod. Let's see. Hmm. Let's go for weapon mod anyway. It's better than challenge. Oh, change the damage type to electric. Now that will do our day tonight. Probably. Wait, ah, uh, no. Wait, I thought it would be electric. It should be. We got plus 60% to electric damage. More rocket launcher damage. <laughs> We'll take in this. Again. This one. Release home in projectile that marks the enemy. Well, let's get yet another jump. But it does. Release homing projectile that marks a single enemy. Oh no. What the hell is happening? Whew. 
Whew. That was close, real close. Ah. Let's get med tech. <laughs> Shop. Well, that was fun. What have we here again? Not 10 max HP less. Skill power or weapon damage? I wonder. Let's see. Let's check more weapon damage and skill power. We'll check this one. We need to unlock one more slot to use it. On the other hand, let's just do this. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice shot. Oh, we're, we're at the boss already. Well, here we go again. That will restore only 12 health points, but that might make a difference. <laughs> yeah, let's try that.
if you're ready to strike. Strike my ass. Yes, I did it for the fuck's sakes. Ah. Oh my god. Whew. What? That's it? We completed the game? For reals? You made it, end of line. I must admit, I'm genuinely impressed, impressed you were able to take down the Phoenix Apex. If it wasn't certain that these two registry GIs are incapable of it, I'd suspect they were playing a cruel joke on us. But these things are eerily infallible in their predictions, aren't they? It isn't a question if you'll ever face such an opponent during actual missions, it's when Watts Rocker and Phoenix get through all the red tape and put a joint super soldier R&D project into gear. Doesn't matter really, you're, you'll be ready. You may have completed the, your simulation mission, but I need you to continue testing the dead link protocol until the CSA is fully ratified. Until then, expect patches and updates improving your interfaces and simulation accuracy. Try another round, make me proud. <laughs> she has nothing to say. What's that? Heal 5 health points when passing through an XP door. Prevent combat shell from being destroyed once per mission. Shield charge reroute. Well, it makes shields picking up shield and increases cooldowns of all skills by 0.2 seconds. Gain 25 skill power when passing through a token door. What the hell? This is. Deal 25% more damage to enemies within 5 meters. Every percent of missing the HP is converted into the attack power. Come on, <laughs> this is all P. Weapon mod selection available at the start of mission.
I don't know, I think this makes of something useful. Genoid, possibly what gets many young deliquents to join Tora in the first place. These robotic companions are one of the flagship products of Tora Heavy Industries, a much des desired luxury in the consumer market. They are provided complementary to Yakuza members as entertainment, performing ev everything from classic Rakugu and Benraku to modern karaoke and idol pop, both in English and Japanese. However, these genoids are also equipped with highly sophisticated defensive subroutines, which makes them perfect bodyguards. Their pleasant, alluring tones does not change even as they rip someone's spine out. Think tank. Military drone, autonomous armored four-legged behemoths that were originally created as new class of farming equipment but quickly found their way to law enforcement and military use, providing Tora with a constant stream of R&D funds. The modules provided with the Tora gang members tend to be equipped with experimental, inquisitive, childlike AA cores, making them more independent but more annoying, often philosophizing about their own existence in between pre-programmed announcements. So we're only 39 minutes into the stream and we already completed the game. Tarantula Spider Tank, Yakuza Boss. The mine's high-ranking Tora gang members are traditionally placed inside what is probably the most advanced product Tora heavy industries can offer. Old and groggy, they're not happy with anyone interfering with neither the Zaibatsus nor the gang's ops. Always in a taste of haze, with a hair trigger temper, these Oyabun are all constantly drunk on a drip feed of highest quality sake. Almost always about to explode at the slightest show of disobedience from anyone, be they his underlings or an interloper such as the CSA combat shells. Phoenix Corporal, heavy weapon specialist. Corporals are the eldest active duty members in Phoenix PMC, giving out orders to their troops with a drill sergeant, sergeant Twang. Their old age means that parts of their biological brains need to be slowly replaced with quantum computing self-conscious equivalents, while the natural neural endings get clogged with fibrosis. This makes them slow, which they make the dub with heavy weaponry and experience. Sir Doom. 2016 and Doom Eternal now. Must feel a lot better. <laughs> Phoenix Pounder. Rapid Dominance Specialist. Heavy look mended and armored, the Pounders are massive piles of servos and hydraulic actuators hiding inside the brains of very experienced so soldiers, confident in their skills and capabilities with nothing to prove to anyone. Their achievements speak for them. Or after cyberpunk. <laughs> okay. Equipped with enormous assisted swing sledgehammers, they make f uh, full use of the psychological effect of pulverizing their opponents to a pulp. Phoenix Hound. The shotgun wielding hounds are the most aggressive and dangerous operatives in Phoenix. They have a lot to prove it, they have a lot of enthusiasm and no respect for their own safety and human rights conventions, flushing out opponents with a hail of buckshot that was once compared to chemical warfare in terms of psychological damage potential, taunting their targets along the way. To better find their targets, they are equipped with, a, with an array of olfactory chemical sensors, hence their name. Phoenix Mothership Field Support Drone Autonomous, heavy, heavily armored, armed and armored flying fortresses that deploy suicide far and forget drone lights. 
the amount of hardware and firepower they hold warrants much more advanced artificial intelligence for this field support BTOL aircraft, also useful for spouting company PR through a loudspeaker. Phoenix Apex, the top of the line, the cream of the crop, the most elite member of the Phoenix Force, augmented with experimental military-grade cybernetics infused with the toughest nano latest alloys money can buy. Uplifted with lost rocker gene therapy, more wetware than the average Phoenix soldier, but definitely less homo sapiens, more homo patent at the point. Created for solely one purpose, stopping the menace plaguing lost rocker operations. The corporate dealings leading to its creation must be stuff of lawyering and legend. Equipment. Let's make another round, by the way. Let's just have some fun. Big starting item. Weapon mod. Fire. Decompression imminent. Well, okay. We'll uh, make this round, I mean, make this run, when we die or complete it, we'll just read some more lore and possibly... And possibly uh, conclude this read. More fire damage and shortcut damage. Sounds cool. Fire attacks deal 25-20% more damage. Nice.
Let's check out our loadout. Yeah, fire damage. More fire damage and toxic damage. Let's take it. Next shot will ignite target. Stun enemies take 20% more damage for 5 seconds. med tech weapon mod let's check more xp we have enough med weapon mods for tonight <laughs> Shields. Well, let's try it. More shotgun damage, by the way. I feel both for both weapons. And here we go back with our shields. Nice. Now oh, shields lost. painful.
Okay, shop XP. I don't have enough money for a shop. Let's check XP then. All we can gain from a shop is another type of grenade. percent more shotgun damage what have we here fire damage is increased both weapons do fire damage sounds fun Confusing. More tokens, more. Sometimes I think that we are a bit lag in credits, oh, but we managed to complete the game anyways, even without all that. The boss already. Grenades deal two hundred percent more damage. What type of grenade do we have? Standard issue. We're buying that and that. Well, that's the middle minimal amount of implants. So far I don't like this run as we don't have enough health points. But we've got so many damage. 
mean so much damage with so many damage types. Take it. Managed to lower our shields to a critical degree. Good job. Good job, robot. Shields are almost gone. Well, rocket launcher damage and shotgun damage plus 20%. Sounds OP. <laughs> Deal damage to marked enemies. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Need this mid. Ouch. mod or credits I'm taking credits
Fun and mechanic, by the way. <laughs> Alright. Electric damage and rocket launcher damage. Well, I think about this one. Remove ignite effect of burning enemies and deal 300 damage to all enemies around them. Fire damage increased by 30% for, for 5 seconds. Hmm. Passive plus 50 skill power. I don't know if we ignite targets, by the way. But, but I like with this 50 skill power. This is too unstable. Let's take this one. That mirror, it was too easy. Ouch! It was really painful. Watch that. You're a freaking green, wasn't it? This raid will die stupidly. Next enemy hit. Should have re rolled this, probably. Both are bad enough. Oh, come on. go shopping.
We need our health boys back. <laughs> yeah, see, we're almost dead. This stuff is nice. All right, let's go further. Did it yet? What the? Check this one. Ignite marked enemies. Let's, let's re roll it. Now, this I like more. We've got to the boss already. Well, according to my info, we're so dead. <laughs> you?
Yay! We did it again! In a row, I can't even believe it. <laughs> well, that was a good run. Combat shell. A CSA operative and consultant grow experience and expertise in handling corporate threats, they're allowed to introduce their own ideas and innovation for improving the effectiveness of combat shells, and with that, operation success rate. Rumiki Usagi was the first CSA member given our blush to realize her idea of the perfect operative. The result of the tinkering to is a sleek, stealthy, precise, and deadly combat shell dubbed the Hunter. Emphasizing her appreciation to, for finesse, the end, this android is made to be less damage resistant than the standard model, with cutting edge equipment making up for the shortcoming. The Hunter combat shell is lighter than the average android with less armor and a highly streamlined design. Easy quit game quit to lead. <laughs> It comes equipped with a lightweight but extremely deadly variable caliber hand, hand cannon dubbed the Peacekeeper in the hands of precise operative its capability for maximizing damage with headshots has no match. The reliable modern handgun is accompanied by cutting edge experimental gear straight out of Rubico's private R&D contracts and connections such as the Arc Cannon, the switchback translocator and latest model of optical camouflage accompanied by active IFF countermeasures. I haven't read about all that. Originally, Scrambler, originally intended to be used for instantly reaching digital locks and temporarily disabling electronic countermeasures in the field, this military augment was found to also have a flashbang like effect on cyber enhanced combatants. In a millisecond, it produces a small cone shaped explosion that disperses chaff particles of superfine magnetic dipoles into the air, followed by a strong electromagnetic discharge. The dipoles increase the effectiveness of the pulse exponentially, forming electric arcs bending light and temporarily disabling most electronics, including cybernetic implants. The visual effect is described by those hit by the device, reminds a sudden flash of static on a 20th century television. It is both debilitating and disorienting. Colloquially said to scramble the brains of combatants. Scrapper shotgun. Caliber tank gauge. Product name Guardian Ink Scrapper. Cartridge. Tungsten shot. Zero. <laughs> Before the governmental amnesty on destructive devices, manufacturing of the massive shotgun would be entirely illegal. Its designer made the gamble of advertising it as the ultimate cyborg killer, christening it with a rather insensitive name and running it over top over the top marketing campaign displaying the destructive capabilities in this super slow, super slow motion featuring a surprisingly reliable novel pompous magazine design and support for hypervelocity armor penetrating tungsten super shot the scrapper actually lived up to all the hype it had become the go to low tech firearm for dealing with cybernized targets among civilians law enforcement and criminals alike Bone Grinder MMP secondary weapon. HM Bone Grinder MMP 20mm caliber cartridge varies purpose build rocks and grenades. Swiss manufacturer HM made a splash in the firearm market by releasing the first truly lightweight magazine fed multi purpose rocket launcher. Officially named the MMP modular multi function platform, it's capable of firing a variety of miniaturized 20mm rocket propelled projectors and grenades. The standard military configuration, also fielded by CSA drones, fired a slow moving, flat trajectory Hero Jet style rocket. The munition is designed for incapacitating cy cyborgs, producing a short range concussive blast that is intended to damage the target's remaining biological parts, effectively turning their insides to mush. The standard rocket's high 
explosive payloads till it remains effective against material that its effectiveness is anti anti personnel weapon only the bone grinder nickname. FF decoy. As a way of increasing survivability and following the hunter's shell for a strategic relocation, Romico has equipped it with a powerful IFF decoy that completely overrides the visual sensors for both cybernetic and robotic opponents. As many target acquisition systems, even in sapient individuals, are completely autonomous, they will proceed the, to attack this digital operation, whether they like it or not. Additionally, the hunter is equipped with state-of-the-art quantum dot optical camouflage, with its which ensures the operator will have time to take a favorable spot for maximizing operational efficiency. Switchback Translocator Hunter Shell Scale The popular term teleportation refers to matter deconstruction and reconstruction of a large distance. Nanotech com companies try to popularize this method of transportation, but the hurdles and complication of consciousness transfer have proven to be an obstacle in its widespread adoption outside short-range emergency deployment of combatants. The term translocation refers to an entirely different principle of instantaneous relocation. Deep space particles colliders have proven the existence of physical fourth dimension, and while it's hardly controllable, devices have been developed to allow objects of relative size to physically switch places via this additional dimension. Through, the, through Rumiko's academic and Chrysler's DARPA connections, CSA was able to produce a portable translocation device. Dubbed the switchback, one of the tactical adventures it provides is the absolute stomach and gyroscope turn into disorientation the opponent experiences after being translocated. Torah Peacekeeper Primary weapon, product name Tora Peacekeeper 662DW hand cannon, caliber of rival 45 to 500. The CSA Hunter, CSA Hunter combat shells are filled with the reliable Nipponese produced Tora 66DW, which, while the modern hand cannon aesthetics reference classic revolvers, its mechanics are entirely modern, a caseless weapon of the 21st century. The detachable cylinder looks like a magazine holding cartridges, but it in, but it in fact serves as a universal matter storage. Then I transfer elemental metals and propellant compounds to the gun's chamber, arranging them into perfectly efficient lattices. This gives the gun capability to change caliber on the fly, as well as form explosive rounds at the cost of more material. There are numerous manufacturers currently improving this handgun design created exclusively for enha enhanced users. It's said the cruciform arrangement of the metro chambers of this model made it popular with the Vatican security detachment. detachment. Arc cannon, secondary weapon, product name Scalar Tech Arc Cannon, cartridge, femto stable superfluid batteries. While conventional weapons still reign supreme on the market, energy weapon, weapons are becoming more commonplace despite their higher price. Often filling niches and roles impractical for classic firearms, these unorthodox weapons are often battle tested by PMCs rather than standard militaries with some very promising designs. One such successful prototype is the Amplifier Resonance Circuit Cannon, developed by French Scalar Tech harnessing the zero-point energy of Femto's latest batteries. Its coils are capable of generating phenomena thought impossible by conventional physics of the, of the previous century. The default configuration fires a slow-moving megawatt-range scalar wave, forming its signature ionized plasma, plasma arc. Alright, we've got only four grenades, and that's it. FF Tech Grenade, throwable explosive Due to advancements in body armor and cybernetics, simple hand-thrown explosive weapons have slowly grown ineffective, requiring increases in yields and additional features to justify their use. Even this basic grenade used by CSA combat shells is enhanced with IFF taken tie for military specs. A grenade hit may not eliminate your enemies, but they will glow like a Christmas tree on the AR overlay, unable to hide it, easier to finish off. Incendiary grenade, throwable explosive. Greek 
firing Molotov cocktails have a new sleek grandkid. Human rights conventions probably lose some of their meaning when most combatants are 20% human tops, right? Incendiary munitions with two metal silicon wafers as sweet ocular implants, but they are far less effective against cybernetic and robotic opponents. This patented and perfected mix of white phosphorus and termite nanofuel is designed to maximize damage to fleshy parts of your opponents. Corrosive grenade. Even if it's gray matter, riding a cybernetic body or robotic exoskeleton, redundancy systems ensure that the combatant will remain a threat even if they are legally dead. Servers need to grind to a halt, armor needs to crumble and weapon weapons need to be deactivated. Total destruction is the only way to be sure an enemy is truly neutralized. This process can be hastened using potent corrosive substances administered using the small explosive package, making life of CSA agent much easier. Electric grenade. Distorting electronic devices and destroying robotic enemies require use of electromagnetic weapons, but be it EMP charges, Tesla generators, or direct energy transfer. This specialized grenade is all that, rolled into one, housing an extremely efficient Casimir vacuum battery attached to a series of capacitors. It's capable of discharging millions of vampires of charge in a blink of an eye, flying frying any cyborg or robot within its electromagnetic pulse range and even damaging biological structures with the plasma arcs it induces. Well, we've completed the game, read all the lore, It's an upgrade that becomes available when we complete when we are completing our mission. All right, thank you everyone for watching. I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. Unfortunately, this game is very short, but we'll keep an eye on this uh, development process. So I wish you good nights with dreams, and stay tuned for more episodes of me playing something something else. We'll probably be reading some more lore in the future. So that's. That's it for today. I wish you good nights with dreams, and stay tuned for the next episode of our stream. See you around. Bye!